Asian Americans, a small slice in the diverse American demographic pie, and arguably they have contributed a lot to the development of Asian science and art in general. Despite that, the image of Asian Americans that is represented in the larger American motion picture industry was not always seen as positive. Although many misconceptions and controversies in recent time, with all of the surprising breakthroughs that this small community bring to the table, the change in reception towards Asian American representation in theatrical works is happening more strongly than ever before. So, it's the right opportunity to look back on how the stereotypes of Asian Americans have changed on the silver screen over time, from the early days to the wonders of modern time. Before then, let's look back on the defining traits of stereotypes. An article called The Role of Stereotypes by Professor Richard Dyer of London gave a holistic view of all the elements evoked through the term stereotype. While modern society often associates stereotype with a negative connotation, it was not intended as such when American writer and reporter Walter Lippmann gave it definition back in 1922. Stereotypes just actually enclosed for fundamental purposes. First, they are the seemingly unavoidable ordering mechanism for a multitude of discrete information that we could acquire from society. However, such system is not infallible, as it can be influenced by people with superior social position over their weaker counterparts, and people may become incapable of adopting changes and modifications in the stereotypical images once they have become so engrossed with the rigid form. Second, stereotypes serve as a shortcut or simple, easily understood definition of a broad concept. Of course, for any form of broad concept, there are nuances exist within, yet stereotypes are incapable of expressing such variety, and that is another of their inherent foibles. Stereotypes are also often used to express the collective values of a specific social group. To be clear, group outside of a particular society. In the Asian American community, the main subject of this project, is part of the stereotypes prevalent in American society, and it extends to the fiction world as well. Social groups that fall into stereotypes always cling to a fixed narrative, no matter which type of film they appear in. But that is not the only one effect of stereotypes in the media landscape. In movies, stereotypical characters are built on immediately recognizable and defining traits that will stay intact throughout the narrative instead of developing into something more novel, more substantial. These elements will be discussed extensively in the coming section when we explore the existence of stereotypes for Asian Americans throughout the history of Hollywood cinema and see whether there are significant changes to how they are developed over time. Dr. Tom Pollard of National University gave an interesting perspective on the depiction of Asians' negative traits in contrast to Americans' superior characteristics in his article, Hollywood's Asian Pacific Pivot, Stereotypes, Xenophobia, and Racism. Throughout the history, Asian stereotypes have manifested in different forms, including the yellow pearl, or the severe criminalization of Asian characters. Perpetual foreigners showing Asian immigrants as an outlier within American society, exotic geisha or the sexual objectification of Asian women and model minority, or Asians as the not so noteworthy nerdy, polite people. In contrast, Americans in movies featuring Asian characters display themselves as powerful, resilient, tough willed against the ruthless Asian villains. With the level of hostile sentiment towards Asians within Asian society on the rise, it is not difficult to find egregious examples of Hollywood productions that reinforce the usual stereotypes as Dr. Pollard has laid out in his paper. It was noted that the portrayal of Asians in World War II combat films were overwhelmingly negative as seen through several productions like Dive Bomber in 1941 or Across the Pacific and Wake Island of 1942. Forward to modern times, in the midst of recent militaristic pivot to Asia Pacific region, the World War II interest in the area returned on the big screen, with war team movies adopting the common stereotypes of the past. The movie Battleship by director Peter Berg is one of them. The Americans are seen as champions of courage, strength, and intelligence who manage to win the battle against invading aliens, while the Japanese are less competent and technologically inferior who are subordinated to the American force. In a similar vein, the film Olympus Has Fallen revolves around a youthful, bold, quick-witted American protagonist, former Secret Services agent Mike Manning, to his eventual victory against the much less capable Asian terrorist. There are even theatrical projects that encompass multiple stereotypes at once, as seen through the film No Escape of John Eric Dowdle. 
The main character of the film, engineer Jack Tower and his family must escape a chaotic Southeast Asian nation with the help of a British intelligence agent called Hammond after their unexpected involvement in an intense civil war clearly exposes the stereotypical perception towards Southeast Asian countries and the local people. Economically disadvantaged, savage, unstable, and prone to destruction. Another example is the film The Asian Connection, made in 2016 with David Zarelli as director. Despite the name, it does not feature any meaningful connection to the Asian heritage. In fact, what is symbolized is quite the opposite. The prominent female character in the film, Avalon, represents the exotic geisha stereotype who serve little purpose to the plot outside of being the female partner of the male protagonist. And the Asian gang in the film embodies the yellow pearl stereotype, murderous, brutish, unintelligent, and obedient to what the boss says. Steven Seagal's unconvincing depiction of a Thai crime lord also brings to mind a stereotypical phenomenon that has existed in the cinema world since early days. Whitewashing or using white actors in heavy makeup as Asians instead of employing native Asian actors for the role. Charlie Chan, the protagonist of a popular Hollywood movie series with the same name, is not portrayed by an Asian actor but a white actor, Werner Olin of Sweden, who has his eyebrows raised and his speech halted, complete with fake beard, to become an oriental detective. Of course, the role also attracts criticisms from people who view his image as an offense to Asian heritage. Even now, whitewashing still rears its head in different Hollywood projects, despite a strong opposition from many media organizations and boycotts from the cinema audience, like Emma Stone as a Chinese Hawaiian character in Aloha, or Scarlett Johansson as a Japanese cyber police in Ghost in the Shell live action movie. With that said, there are still theatrical productions that dare to walk on a different path, away from the incorrect stereotypes to give way to the rise for more faithful Asian representations. In Ang Lee's Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, the three female warriors, Lian, Jade, and Jen, are actually subjects of focus as they are gifted martial artists on the quest to retrieve a valuable missing sword, breaking the norm that Asian protagonists are often powerful, influential males. The author concludes his paper with the observation that Hollywood filmmakers are now shifting more towards the profitable Chinese market, leaving the potential for the birth of films that depict Asian characters in more positive, more accurate light. The article, Asian American Media Representation, a Film Analysis and Implications for Identity Development by Dr. Tiffany Bessina, does not only concern with the shift and changes in the Asian American representation in the U.S. motion picture industry, it also examines how Asian Americans are characterized in media affects the development of identity and social interactions for adolescents and young adults. Despite being the fastest growing racial segment, Asian Americans are still underrepresented in mainstream media and their media representation can significantly affect how the sense of identity is developed in children and how other communities will perceive of Asian Americans. The author then reveals the tremendous responsibility of the media in transmitting and reinforcing certain forms of negative stereotypes within the early formation of personality and belief system in any human, leading to acts of discrimination in the future. Therefore, exploring the lack of media representation will be a great way to understand the social sphere surrounding any individual and the possible impact on identity development. The article also makes clear that film is the primary focus of the research for its potential of spreading cultural messages to a broader audience than that of regular social platforms like Facebook or Instagram. There are three main stereotypes that contribute to the complication of early ethnic and racial identity formation. Then they are further strengthened by the mass media environment. From Perpetual Foreigner, once again, the exclusion of Asian Americans in mainstream entertainment which invokes identity crisis and low sense of belonging to American cultural system. Cultulative stress, or the physical burden from the need of adopting to cultural characteristics of the new country due to severe incompatibilities, often seen in the younger demographic. Lastly, the modern minority myth, or the common stereotype that Asians are smarter, more economically successful than other ethnic minority counterparts. Yet this myth is seriously flawed, as it could be applied equally to every single Asian American due to differences in background, status, or the youth who do not conform to the stereotype will face distressful pressure and feel out of place even in their native community. Eventually, it will leave an impact on how Asian American youth view themselves. The portfolio of 35 films chosen for this research are from public databases like IMDb and must satisfy for predetermined criteria. 
contain at least one lead or supporting character of Asian descent are produced in the US, are made after 1993, and accessible through streaming platforms. From initial observations to direct film viewing, the attributes of Asian movie characters are placed in three major categories. Stereotype resisting, when it challenged the prevalent notion about Asian Americans, or stereotype conforming, when it reinforced the archetypical representation or others. The findings are interesting. There is a corresponding increase in Asian American characters to the rise in population, and they start to adopt more prominent roles in recent movies. Female characters tend to be younger, from 10 to 30, while male characters appear to spread across a wider age range, from 17 to 64. In addition, Asian actors now appear in more diverse film genres than before, from drama, horror, to science fiction, and romantic comedy giving the adolescents and the youth more positive role models to observe and follow after. However, the same cannot be said for the directing personnel, as the vast majority of them are still identified as white. The problem is that they can hold inaccurate depiction of Asians in mind, and that will not only reinforce negative stereotypes instead of resisting them, like in Gran Torino, where the main character did embrace the perpetual foreigner stereotype at the beginning but also exacerbate the identity crisis that many Asian Americans are facing. The number of stereotype resisting Asian characters are also increasing, which is a positive sign. Specifically, female Asian characters once appeared reserved, threatening, or yielding. Now they are described as compassionate, courageous, humorous, or open-minded. A Yuna from Cloud Atlas, Kitty in To All the Boys I Have Loved Before, or Lady Margaret, the Princess Witch. For the male counterparts, have gone from ruthless, villainous images to take on more vital roles, usually as loyal, brave, and strong-willed characters like Kumail in The Big Sick, Liu Kang in Mortal Kombat, Moreover, the down to earth characters form an intriguing departure from the usual materialistic, elitist Asian stereotypes like Shu Lor in Gran Torino or Stacey De Novo in The Princess Switch. Unfortunately, the stereotype conforming representations are still prevalent. Outside of the mighty, athletic leading roles, there are still male characters who uphold either the nerdy, intelligent stereotype with little development forward, like Ned of the MCU Spider Man series or Dylan in The Aquila and the Bee or comedic relief side characters, in which the Asians can be interpreted as fools, like Chan Wang in Shanghai Noon, or Jared Imwi in Rogue One, a Star Wars story with a quiet hilarious line, Are you kidding me? I'm blind, when he is kidnapped with a bag on his head. Are you kidding me? I'm blind! Furthermore, the weak and fearful Asian woman can be found in Knives Chow, or Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, or Sought Me of Cloud Atlas, who typically depend on their white male partners to actually gain their confidence. Other notable types of characters based on cultural misconceptions include sadistic, menacing Asian villains with strong preference for violence, a Huli of Rush Hour 2, a Dragon Lady Jasmine in Rush Hour 3, the perpetual foreigners who are taunted by white characters for not belonging to the American society, like John Wang in Shanghai Noon, or Quan Ngoc Ming in The Foreigner. People in Belfast won't take kindly to your accusations. If you do not know who they are, I would like you to please find out. The emphasis on family ties in Asian cultures is also a point of exploit in Hollywood movies displayed through the obedient children like Mei Ying of The Karate Kid, the unusually strict parents like Eleanor and Arma Young of Crazy Rich Asians, to the point that they are willing to break their child's romance to maintain family tradition. You will never be enough. Lastly, the more general gender roles also influence the appearance of Asian characters on the silver screen in one way or another. For males, they are often described as sexually indifferent while suffering from the whitewashing problem based on their lighter skin color being viewed as more attractive. These traits have worsened the low self-esteem and insecurities for attractiveness among Asian American men and consolidated the white supremacy viewpoint within the audience.
for females, they're most likely to serve the role of helpless, romantic partners at prizes for the other hardships that their male counterparts have experienced through to reach them, while their portrayal of having the eyes streak of hairs could be a sign of exoticism. Female characters are often created to conform to the idea of petite, lean body type, which do not do any great favor for the self-esteem of women who do not rate their body highly. Plus, the focus on heterosexual relationships and the general lack of gender spectrum for Asian characters seem to exclude the young Asian homosexual community itself, forming a major obstruction to the often neglected sexual identity discovery for the youth. While there are still limitations need to be aware of, the results recorded have painted a fairly accurate picture of where Asian American representation in motion picture industry have improved and have recessed in recent time. Unlike the previous two researches, the article, The State of Asian American Cinema in Search of Community by Peter X. Fang, delves into the situation of Asian American filmmakers and the difficulties they face in delivering their brand children to the mass audience. It starts with a not so encouraging remark. The number of Asian American feature films that were actually released on theaters can be counted on 10 fingers. It is that small. While some Asian American filmmakers have made strides in the industry, the films that they are involved in are not about Asian American characters and does not tell Asian American stories. They often have to subdue their Asian heritage or infuse Asian elements to the filmmaking process in order for their films to achieve widespread adoption, which is not ideal in any way. However, by the end of the 1990s, there are five films that embrace the question of Asian American identity and find a different answer for their own, breaking away from the common Asian or American mindset in the industry. The first one, My America or Hunk If You Love Butter, sounds like a whimsical title from a noteworthy documentary filmmaker Rene Tajina Papena, but it is an interesting road trip style movie documenting the diversity of Asian American community in different areas across the nation. From the Bernard sisters, eight generations of Filipinos in Louisiana, to Yang family from Laos who once fought for the CIA, from the rapper duo Soul Brothers to the political activist duo Yuri and Bill Kochiyama. There's no fancy actions, no bells and whistles, just small but meaningful slices of life that give meaningful insight into the different experiences of Asian American community here in the US. While My America, a hunk if you love butter, gains broader distribution to the market, the next film, Yellow, by director Chris Chan Lee, is actually screened on theaters city by city. By casting only young Asian American actors in the conventional plot of youth breaking out parents' expectation, the film is an interesting departure from the norm. Aside of the youthful radiance that the Asian American actors express, director Lee also takes this opportunity to clear up the misunderstanding between Korean American and African American, which is fooled by the media and believed to be the case by many. Move on to Sunset by Michael Idiomoto and Eric Nakamura. This is a special case in which the filmmakers do not specifically focus on or reinforce Asian ethnicity. The stereotypes along with it, but only attempts to tell the story of troubled teens in a small town of Northern California. On the other end of the spectrum is Strawberry Field by Ria Tajiri, which reflects the strength of gestion with fire of a Japanese-American child called Irene. Stemming from her grandfather's action of burning the Japanese mementos before leaving the family's strawberry field to enter the World War I internment camp. Stemming from her grandfather's action of burning the Japanese mementos, the link to his heritage, for leaving the family's strawberry field to enter the World War I internment camp. The internment camp is a controversial topic in the long-standing Asian American history and Strawberry Field has made a bold attempt to call attention to it to encourage a re-examination of such tragic time history, a boom that is not so prevalent among the collection of Asian American films. The last of the aforementioned quintuplet is Shopping for Fangs. The unique characteristics of this film is that it explores often sensitive topic in Asian American culture, sexual neurosis in two alternating stories, one is a man called Phil who discovers his inner sexual confidence through a freaky incident turning him into a werewolf. The other is a passive lady called Catherine who begins to receive strange love letters from an outgoing Asian American blonde. The fate eventually intertwined, ending with an unexpected shared ride. On a such setting is the search for the meaning of Asian American identity in the rapidly changing suburb of Los Angeles. All five films are made by Asian American directors, all tell from mundane to striking stories and all achieve various degrees of success, yet they all share a sense of longing for community, for the identity that seems to be lost in the gradual cultural assimilation. 
that also represent the bold new path for Asian American filmmakers, showing that Asian oriented plots still have a place and encourage more and more aspirational directors to explore the stories close to them and even assist in clearing up long held stereotypical misconceptions about Asian American community. Until recently, Asian American community has enjoyed a greater impact on the silver screen with more and more positive depiction trying to correct the traditional stereotypes to instill a better perception of what Asian Americans really represent. However, as the reference researchers have shown, it does not mean that the culturally inaccurate characterization of Asians have already vanished. If the current explosion in the norm-breaking Asian American roles could maintain its momentum, it would not be too far-fetched to predict that the universally right understanding would become prominent and overpower the terrible stereotypes in the mind of American film watchers.